dear students today we will learn about pileid clays so what are pileid clays what are their uses and how we can synthesize these pileid clays Barrier and MacLeod in 1955 they first synthesized the clays actually the pileid is not given at that time the name pileid has not been given at uh, in 1955 but they have synthesized some uh, different type of clays from spectite clay mineral and here they uh, they transform the lamellar solid into porous material so that was the starting of the preparation of pileid clays already although they don't give the name pileid to that clay but they had prepared this, the clay from the smectite clay and that clay was a porous kind of material uh, then this pileid or pilaring these terms they have been given by uh, brindley and sapples in 1977 so pileid name has been given in 1970s but they have been synthesized in 1950s okay so i have written that transformation of lamellar solid into porous material now we will see what is the difference between the clays and pileid clays now we we told that the transformation of lamellar solid into porous material so first of all we have to learn some terminologies related to the pileid clays which terminologies the terminologies they come again and again when we learn about pileid clays so first uh, thing is that what is Uh, the uh, layered compound layered compounds are the layers of atoms they are uh, attached through the physical interactions actually the layers we have already studied about the clays and in that clays you have uh, we have shown that the layers of the atoms present in each layer in each adjacent layer they were interacted through physical interactions like van der waals forces but the atoms within the layer they are attached through the chemical bonds so if we told about the Uh, layered compound the layered compound means there are several layers several layers and those layers they are attached to each other via physical interactions okay while the atoms present in the layers the atoms present within the layer they are attached via chemical bonds so first of all we have to learn about the layered compound what are the layered compound the layered compounds we will use are clays actually clays where you have seen that the clays may be 2 is to 1 maybe 1 is to 1 because tetrahedra octahedra tetrahedra so if we are uh, talking about uh, clays like montmorillonite then or smectite it is a kind of smectite clay where you will find it it is as 2 is to 1 ratio of tetrahedra and octahedra so uh, one layer is tetrahedra octahedra tetrahedra the other layer is tetrahedra octahedra tetrahedra so in between these two layers the atoms are joined together via physical interactions but within the tetrahedra within the octahedra the atoms are attached via chemical bonds okay now in these uh, in between these layers the is there is a space so the space between these two layers is known as interlayer space because this space is present between the two layers so it is interlayer space and if we add some kind of organic or inorganic substance in between these interlayer spaces then the process is known as intercalation okay so inorganic or organic compound can be intercalated between clay lamellas lamellae or interlayer space so now the new term generate that is intercalation so what is intercalation intercalation is the process of inserting any gas molecule 
or moiety in the interlayer space. So, intercalation is the process in which a guest molecule, guest, which is a guest molecule, guest molecules are actually organic or inorganic compounds. So, we insert these guest molecule in the interlayer space. This process is called as intercalation. The intercalation should be done in such a way that it cannot destruct the layer structure. So, these are the different terminologies. Uh, now, there are some other terminologies also. So, so, first terminology is layered compound. So, layered compound is our clay, which we are converting into pillared clay. So, clay is converted into pillared clay. Then the second one is intercalation. Intercalation is the process of inserting the organic or inorganic compounds in the interlayer space. Now the interlayer space, the space between the two layers and intercalation should be done in such a way so that the layered structure could not destruct. Okay. So these are the different terminologies. Now, the other terminology is pillaring. It's like a pillar actually. Okay, So, this is pillaring. The layered compound, it is converted into thermally stable porous material. And this process is known as pillaring. What is pillaring? Pillaring means to convert a layered compound. Layered compound is clay. So, to convert a layer compound into thermally stable porous material that has permanent porosity and the porosity may be microporous or it may be mesoporous. Microporous means the pore size in the, uh, the uh, clay, pillared clay will be less than 2 nanometer or if it is in between 2 to 50 nanometer then it is known as mesoporous kind of material. So, this porous material is actually called as the, uh, the pillared clay. So, pillaring, pillaring is the conversion of layered compound into porous compound. This porous compound may be microporous, may be mesoporous. This depends upon the size of pores. And during this pillaring process, the retention of layer structure should be there. It, it should not be destructed. Now, the pillaring agents. So, what are the pillaring agents? Pillaring agents, actually, they are the inorganic or organic compounds that are intercalated between the adjacent layers of a layered compound or they are intercalated between the interlay in the interlayer space of the layered compound. Layered compound, again, it is a clay. So, that is the pillaring agents, okay? So, these are different terminologies. I think you understand what is pillaring. Pillaring is the process to convert a layered compound into porous compound. For that, we require some pillaring agent. Pillaring agent are the inorganic or organic substances. Okay. So, they intercalate. Intercalation means insertion of these foreign bodies in the interlayer space. So, it is known as intercalation. So, these uh, moieties, they intercalated in the interlayer space. Now, what are the properties of pillared clays? What is the advantage of pillared clays? We can just do the, um, the work with the help of simple clays, but we have prepared the pillared compounds. Why? Because the, the pillared compounds, they are generally very stable. Number one point is about their thermal stability. So, they are highly thermally stable. Pillared compound are the compounds uh, that are formed after intercalation of inorganic or organic compounds. So, what should be the properties of a pillared compound? So, pillared compound should be thermally stable. This should be the first property of these uh, pillared compounds. They should be thermally stable. The layers should not collapse on removal of solvent. So, layers should remain at a distance before as uh, before the removal of solvent. So, solvent should not affect the, the interlayer space. The interlayer space should be porous. This should be the third point that the layer interlayer space should be 
porous and the pores should be such a size that they should be accessible to a molecule as large as nitrogen the pore size may be greater than this but at least it should access a molecule that is large as nitrogen so this should be the property of the pillard compound that we are preparing now we will study about the synthesis of pillard clay these are the general steps for preparation of pillard clays or pillard compounds so first we convert the layered compound into intercalation compound and this intercalation compound then convert into pillard compound and these are the pillard clays actually if we are preparing the pillard clays then this pillard compound is the pillard clays so these are the different steps for synthesis of pillard clays number one step is the preparation of pillard agent so first of all we will prepare the solution of pillaring agent and here we have taken the example of aluminium 13 uh, the, there can be other uh, metals can be used like cobalt iron titanium and some other organic compounds here we have taken the example of aluminium polyoxocation okay so first we will prepare the pillaring agent so how pillaring agent will prepare inorganic hydrated polyoxocation this is the pillaring agent in this synthetic process there are two different uh, methods to prepare this al13 polyoxocation one is mixing of aqueous alcl3 with al so that chlorohydrates will be prepared the second method is the reaction of aluminum chloride or aluminum nitrate solution in presence of base and that will convert this aluminum chloride to polyoxocation complex so these polyoxocation complex they will act as the pillaring agent here but there may be different other kinds of pillaring agents very vast uh, categories are there and this is one of the inorganic pillaring agent the pillaring agent may be organic also and this is the formula of this polyoxocation this can be synthesized by these two methods and this is our pillaring agent okay so this is our pillaring agent this is aluminium polyoxocation then after the preparation of pillaring agent the second step is mixing this is also known as intercalation process now we are taking the layered compound so this is the layered compound which we have to be uh, in which we have to be convert into the pillared clays so we have taken the clay suspension this is the layered compound and this clay suspension is then added to the polyoxocation solution and then mix well and during this mixing exchange of interlayer cations with polyoxocations takes place you already know that in case of like in case of montmorillonite clay there are some cations like sodium in the interlayer space so in that lay interlayer space the the cations they exchange with the polyoxocations so that at the interlayer space of this clay suspension the intercalation of this pillaring agent will take place the third step is the separation of pillared compound and its washing the intercalated clay is washed and calcinated and then separated so after synthesis uh, it is calcinated it is dried and the properties of this pillaring compound it depends upon the type of clay used drying conditions mixing and pillaring agents use so its property depends upon these different properties of layered compound the conditions of drying the mixing and pillaring agents use so there are three main steps during the synthesis of pillaring clays one step is synthesis of pillared clays the second one is mixing and the third one is separation and washing 
so this is the process of pilari so now you can see that this is a clay this is a layered compound you can see this layer is of tetrahedra this medium layer is of octahedra this is again the layer of tetrahedra so this is t o t okay so this is t o t 2 is to 1 this is again t o t so this is one layer and this is another layer so in between these two layers this is the interlayer space and at this interlayer space there are cations so these cations this clay when treated with the polyoxocation so this is the process of intercalation where you will find that these small cations they were replaced by these polyoxocations these are larger in size so this process is known as inter calcination after intercalation then calcination will be done heating will be done and then you would find that these polyoxocation they will stand like pillars so now this is the pillared clay so this is the pillared clay here you can find that the polyoxocation after calcination they become pill they, they form pillar like structures so this is known as pillared clay now with the help of this diagram i will show you the difference between clay and pillared clay so why it is very important to uh, improve the catalytic properties of clays when we convert these clays into pillared clays so here you will find that this is a clay so if we uh, the if we hydrate this clay then we will find that this interlayer gap will increase and these cation will be hydrated so there are the water molecules around these cations and after dehydration again we will find the same clay with the smaller interlayer space here the interlayer space increased due to the hydration of these cations so this is called as the temporary porosity of the clays this is the temporary porosity because as we hydrate then porosity will increase and when we dehydrate the porosity will decrease so this is the temporary porosity of the clays while in case of pillared clays you will find that due to these pillars these are the cations and if we hydrate this pillared clay these cations have no effect on the interlayer space because these interlayer space it is maintained through these pillars and these become hydrated and after dehydration you will find no change in the gap so this is called as, as the permanent porosity of pillared clays so there is no effect on the interlayer space of the pillared clays after hydration or dehydration so this is the permanent porosity of pillared clays so pillared clays are very important as they have permanent porosity and second one is because you have seen that these clays they have been heated at higher temperature for calcination for pillaring process so they are also thermally stable now applications of pillared clays actually pillared clays like simple clays they also acts as green catalyst so we will find the different applications of pillared clays in industrial processes now uh, the pillared clays have three main properties number one is high surface area number second is permanent porosity and number three is high thermal stability so due to these three important properties it is used for waste water treatment and it is also used in for catalytic purposes for a waste water treatment it used generally for the removal of organic kind of compounds like dyes and this occurs through adsorption processes because it has high surface area so at the area so at the surface of the pillared clays the adsorption process takes place adsorption of the dyes that are present in the waste water uh, that uh, the their removal takes place through the adsorption process and the second kind of uh, application is the catalytic process and in this catalytic process two important processes are cracking 
and dehydrogenation of methanol. Now we will discuss these two uh, kind of applications one by one. Uh, the process of wastewater treatment it usually it uses the advanced oxidation process AOPs and in this the aqueous phase oxidation process takes place and during aqueous phase oxidation generation of hydroxyl free radical will takes place which helps in breakdown of organic pollutants so generally in the wastewater treatment this advanced oxidation process uh, it's uh, the main process that actually uh, res uh, is responsible for the breakdown of organic pollutants so these are the processes uh, through which the wastewater treatment has uh, is uh, done using pillard clays so first of all the adsorption of organic pollutant on the surface of the pillard clays will takes place then advanced oxidation process will takes place and this advanced oxidation process is helpful in the removal of pollutants so like this al chromium pillard clays they are beneficial for removal of benzene in the wastewater likewise titanium pillard clays they remove by bisphenol a iron chromium pillard clays they are helpful in removal of phenols in the wastewater like uh, this fin these phenols they are oxidized to catechol hydroquinone or benzoquinone and then uh, they further convert it into organic acids such as oxalic formic fumaric acid so they break down into the smaller molecules thus these uh, compounds organic compounds present in the wastewater they degrade they break down into smaller molecules uh, and here we have uh, used the pillard clays for this removal or for this background because like clays pillard clays they also acts as heterogeneous materials so it is very uh, effective to remove these heterogeneous catalyst easily so one of the main uh, advantage of this kind of catalyst is their heterogeneous behavior which can easily be uh, removed from the reaction medium the second advantage of pillard clays is the catalytic processes uh, among these one is the dehydrogenation of methyl alcohol so in presence of copper pillard clays the uh, methanol can be converted to methyl formate and this is exclusively easily done in presence of copper pillard clays the other uh, catalytic uh, advantage is the cracking it acts as the cracking catalyst pillard clays are more stable at higher temperature so this is the difference of pillard clays with the clays because the pillard clays they have also been prepared at high temperature so they can resist the temperature greater than 200 degree centigrade and they are useful for the conversion of vegetable oils to the bio diesel or biofuels so they are very good cracking catalyst because catalyst jo the cracking can be done at higher temperature and these pillard clays they are registered for the temperature these are the different catalytic cracking processes then first we will see the vegetable oil this vegetable oil on pyrolysis this is the initial cracking so we have used the pillard clays in uh, this cracking so this vegetable oil first it pyrolyzed and it will convert into long chain hydrocarbons and long chain oxygenated hydrocarbons so here the oxygenation will take place and vegetable oil will uh, disintegrate into long chain hydrocarbons and long chain oxygenated hydrocarbons then in the next step the secondary cracking will takes place and long chain oxygenated hydrocarbons will convert into long chain hydrocarbons again and into some gases so here in this step in the secondary cracking the formation of gaseous products will takes place then these long chain the long chains uh, hydrocarbons uh, produ produced in the initial cracking and in the secondary cracking they will 
convert into gaseous products. The next step is the oligomerization of these long chain hydrocarbons. They convert into paraffins and short chain olefins. Then the short chain olefins they convert into two C2 to C10 olefins. And after aromatization, the C2 to C10 olefins they convert into aliphatic hydrocarbons and aromatic uh, hydrocarbons. Okay, so this uh, this change occurs through aromatization, isomerization, and alkylation, and these aromatic uh, hydrocarbons they convert into coke through polymerization reaction. So these are the different reaction where the Pilard clays actually uh, I have I should return the Pilard clays at each point. So uh, for this cracking we have used the Pilard clays. So, uh, we have added the Pillard clays and the temperature is very high. So, in presence of Pillard clays, uh, at the surface of these Pillard clays, the cracking of this vegetable oil takes place into biofuel. Okay. So, uh, the, the, there are different kind of processes, initial cracking, secondary cracking, then oligomerization, maybe aromatization or maybe isomerization, alkylation. So, these through these processes, the cracking of the vegetable oil can be done. So, it is used in the cracking process in petrochemical industry. Pillard clays can also be used in the isomerization reaction. So, it, it acts as a catalyst to increase the octane number. So, this is a kind of isomerization where nickel and cobalt, uh, these pillard clays, they can convert the, these N alkanes to isoalkanes through isomerization so that the normal chain compound they convert into branched chain compounds so that the octane number of these alkane will increase. It is also helpful in the conversion of methanol to alkane. So, methanol can convert it into alkanes with the help of Pillard clays. You can see that the temperature is very high. So, at this temperature, the Millard clays can easily act because they are stable at higher temperatures. And then uh, synthetic gas can also be converted into hydrocarbons in presence of Pillard clays. So, these are the uh, catalytic activities of the Pillard clays. Now, we will study about the analytical techniques for characterization of clays and Pillard clays. So, how these clays and Pillard clays can be identified or can be characterized uh, these techniques they are discussed in this section so the first method is the x-ray diffraction that is xrd so this xrd can be used uh, for both pure and mixed clays means they can be used for mixed clays for clays and for pillard clays also and generally the change in the structure can be differentiated by d spacing because x-ray crystallography is helpful in uh, in determining the internuclear distance interatomic distance so d spacing uh, will helpful in determining or differentiating the structures Heating stage XRD is also used for identification of direct structural changes. So, thus XRD is used for characterization of clays and pillard clays. The other method uh, that is used for uh, the characterization of clays and pillard clays is electron microscopy. And this electron microscopy, it came to existence in 1960s. And in this electron microscopy, the beam of electrons it is eliminated to the clay or pillard clays or any sample and thus X-ray will generate. And this generated X-ray will be helpful in deciding the characteristic pattern in at the surface of the sample. So, this electron microscopy is generally of two types. One is scanning electron microscopy. So, you can... 
uh, with the help of name we we can uh, it it is suggesting that this kind of microscopy will scan the surface of the sample so it provides high resolution information of the surface of the sample and the other is the transmission electron microscopy that is tam so you have uh, 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 heard about SAM and TAM, and this TAM uh, provides high resolution image. So this TAM is uh, it 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 generally determines the uh, crystal structure impurities and any kind of stress in the molecule. While this uh, scanning electron microscopy, it uh, generally provides an idea about the surface of the uh, sample. and uh, this tam is helpful in defining the crystal structure the impurities present and the stress present in the clays or pillard clays or any other sample and they also use the tam is also used for location determination of pillars in the pillard clays so thus uh, where are the uh, the pillars are present in the pillard clays that can be determined with the help of tam the third kind of uh, technique is atomic force spectroscopy microscopy and atomic force uh, microscopy that is afm it uh, came to existence in 1980s and here the image formation takes place due to interaction of very fine tip of silicon nitride or silicon with the sample surface so it uh, generally in uh, this tip it acts as a phonograph in uh, previous uh, Uh, in uh, you have seen in the uh, record players of old times where you will find that a tip kind of uh, structure it uh, touches the uh, the whole uh, uh, that uh, the uh, uh, that audio tape and then the audio tape will uh, run likewise this uh, uh, atomic force microscopy in this atomic force microscopy it, it acts as phonograph and this tip will help full in determining the uh, great level of details of the sample and generally this atomic force microscopy can produce three dimensional topography on atomically a smooth surface so this is the difference between atomic force microscopy and electron microscopy that electron microscopy generally it it scans the uh, the atomically rough surfaces of the sample while this atomic microscopy it uh, it uh, produces the three dimensional topography of an atomically smooth surfaces and it gives the greater level of details of the samples vibrational spectroscopy is the adult technique for characterizing the functional group present on the clay so it includes the infrared spectroscopy and raman spectroscopy and they are used for determination of functional groups present on the clay then nmr in or this nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy it gives detailed arrangement of atoms and their environment in the clays and pillard clays and the other method is the x ray photo electron spectroscopy that is known as xps and uh, through this xps spectra obtained by irradiating the sample with x ray beam so here again the spectra will be obtained by irradiating the sample with the x ray beam and thus this xps is detects the elemental composition generally xps is useful for elemental composition of the sample and except helium and hydrogen it can detect each kind of element in the Uh, in the sample so in this way there are a number of techniques that are helpful in determining or in characterizing or in identification of the clays and pillard clays now we will complete uh, conclude the pillard clays lecture and in this lecture we have studied about the different terminologies related to the pillard clays and the terminologies are the layered compounds generally they are the clays then intercalation process uh, and then uh, interlayer space and then 
the pillaring process and about the pillaring agents and in this lecture we have discussed about the pillaring agents that are inorganic in nature and that are of aluminium polyoxocations and uh, then we have studied about the properties of pillared compound uh, it should be thermally stable it should be accessible to a molecule as large as nitrogen and interlayer space in the pillared compound should be porous and the layer should not collapse on removal of the solvent then we have studied about the synthesis of pillard clays where we have seen that layered compound will convert first into the intercalation compound then it will convert into pillard compounds the three main steps are the preparation of pillaring agents then intercalation process and then the separation and washing that is uh, it in, it also includes the calcinated process and i have shown you with the help of the figure then how the clays are different from from the pillared clays and you have seen that uh, the clays have a temporary porosity while these uh, pillared clays they have permanent porosity so this uh, the three main properties that are high surface area permanent porosity and high thermal stability makes the pillared clays a good catalyst and it is it has various applications in the industrial Uh, industries various industries like it is useful in waste water treatment for removal of dyes and that takes place through the adsorption processes and through advanced oxidation processes where the organic molecules they break down into smaller organic compounds then the other uh, application is the catalytic processes the catalytic processes includes the cracking and dehydrogenation of methanol so uh, so these uh, these pillared clays they are helpful in cracking uh, in cracking of vegetable oils and these vegetable oils can be converted into biodiesel by using these pillared clays through initial cracking secondary cracking oligomerization aromatization isomerization and alkylation and polymerization and then uh, isomerization technique is also helpful in conversion of normal chain compounds into branched chain compounds so that the octane number will increase or the fuel will increase then uh, it can helpful in the preparation of hydrocarbons from the synthetic gases then we have different analytical techniques uh, can be used for characterization of clays and pillared clays like xrd is used uh, for identification of direct structural changes uh, by uh, through differentiation in the d spacing then electron microscopy can be used for high resolution high resolution information of the surface and sometimes also about the crystal structure impurities and stress present in the crystals and then the location of the pillars in the pillared clays the other kind of uh, technique that is atomic forces microscopy it is also used for uh, for identifying the surface in the Uh, atomically smooth surfaces then vibrational spectroscopy is helpful in determination of functional groups nmr is used for uh, the detailed arrangement of atoms and their environment then xps is used for elemental analysis so this is all about the pillared clays how they are important what are the advantages of pillared clays over the clays so thank you very much